Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our virtual college visit series. We are super excited to have Furman University with us today. Um, and we have uh, two of their admissions representatives joining us. We have Jillian Newton. Jillian, I'll let you go ahead and say hello. Perfect. Hi, guys. Virtually. And, and we also have Hill Douglas. Hey, everybody. And then from Hanover County Public Schools, we also have April Corbin, Mrs. Corbin on the uh, visit with us today as well. Hi, everybody. Good to be here. So we are just gonna go ahead and jump right into things. Um, and at the end of this session, we will have a time for any kind of questions or anything along those lines. And uh, Jillian, I will hand it over to you to get us started. Awesome, thanks Shannon. So hi everyone again, my name is Jillian Newton, the admissions counselor at Furman and, and an alumna of Furman as well. I am joined by one of our current Furman students, Hill Douglas. So I'm gonna allow him to do a short introduction of himself and then we'll get started with a short presentation and then a Q and A with Hill. So whenever you're ready, Hill, we'll get started. Yeah, so hey everybody, my name is Hill Douglas. I am a junior um, at Furman from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and I am majoring in history. Um, just a few things I am involved with on campus um, that have really helped make my Furman experience so great is the Shucker Leadership Institute, um, which is a uh, leadership program um, where you learn a lot of leadership skills and things like that. And it's got a, a, a big emphasis on service as well. Um, I'm also involved with admissions ambassadors, which is how I get to be on the Zoom call with you all today. Um, so I help represent the school for uh, what would normally be on campus tours, but things are looking a little different this year. Um, I'm also involved with the uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, as well as um, Greek Life. So uh, if anybody has any question about those, uh, I'd be glad to answer them. Um, and then kind of the last thing I like to like to say is uh, I came to Furman because it kind of had everything that I was looking for in a school. It was a a uh, small liberal arts school where I didn't have to decide my major until the end of my sophomore year. Um, small class sizes, great academics and all that. But I think what's really uh, made me stay at Furman and what's been my favorite aspect is, is the sense of community and the um, students, the professors, the faculty, everybody you meet is looking out for you and is always a happy face to see on campus. Awesome, perfect, thanks Hill. And with that, we'll get started a little more so you guys can find out about Furman. Uh, we are located in Greenville, South Carolina. So as you can see, it's close to some other major cities like Asheville, Atlanta, Charlotte, Charleston. But even though we are close to these other places, you never really see students going into the cities over the course of their weekends or even for a, a shorter break, just because there's so much to do in downtown Greenville. In terms of food, anything from American to Thai to Mexican food is gonna be right on our main street. We're only about 15 minutes away from campus, so it also is a wonderful opportunity for some of our students to get involved with some companies like BMW, Michelin, a hospital network as well, but really just a way for our students to have some fun and blow off some steam after a long academic week. There's usually some sort of fall festival music concert. We have a few minor league sports games, so if anyone is interested in ice hockey or baseball, uh, students love to grab big groups of friends and go to these games as well. On our Furman campus, we have about 2,800 students, so I like to call that the bigger size of small. That means it's going to be a smaller student body on a very big campus. We have about 750 acres, which includes a golf course, a lake with a bell tower, multiple nature trails, as well as all of our academic buildings and athletic about 72% of our students are coming from outside of South Carolina with 48 states represented in 22 countries. So I always joke with students that maybe you'll have a best friend or a roommate from somewhere really cool like California or Brazil. You'll get to save some money on housing when you stay with them instead of booking a hotel. But no, in all reality, we understand that a lot of our 17 and 18 year old students haven't seen a lot of the world. So that's something that Berman is trying to do. Just bring a little part of that world to us on our campus. <laughs> Because of our small campus size, we also have small class sizes. Our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one with our average class size setting at about 15 students. We also always cap classes at 32 students. So you're never gonna have a course that's bigger than that. So you're typically never gonna be at a huge lecture hall with hundreds and hundreds of people. It's always gonna be a very small classroom in which you're making eye contact and engaging with your classmates and your professor around you as well. Our close-knit community really just allows our students 
to identify which experiences and relationships are going to be valuable to them and helping attain their goal after the end of their four years. So you're usually randomly assigned an advisor. And then once you declare your major, which you actually have two years to do, we don't want to put any pressure on our students in determining that anytime soon. Then you can switch into an advisor program uh, into that specific department. Um, and that advisor advising into relationship that we have is part of the Furman Advantage. Um, a program that I like to say has been around since Furman first opened in 1826. Now it just has a really cool label to it. And the Furman Advantage is us guaranteeing our students that their experience is going to be completely unique to them. So even though they might be in a similar major or have similar academic interests as a classmate, their experience over the four years is going to be completely individualized and it's not going to look like anyone else's on campus. The Furman Advantage also guarantees our students the opportunity to participate in different high impact practices, which are going to be directly connected to their academic program of study. That's our second pillar or second promise, um, as you can see on the screen. So starting with internships, like I mentioned, we're only 15 minutes away from downtown Greenville. So students have worked with major companies like BMW, Michelin or Prisma Health, which is the largest hospital network in all of South Carolina, and Furman is the only undergraduate program to actually be partnered with them. Our internship office right in the middle of campus works extremely closely with our career center, so if you need help writing a resume, cover letter, learning how to dress for an interview, or how to even discover some sort of internship in Greenville or in your area that you're from, that internship office is dedicated to helping students in that way. Our internships and research are not only guaranteeing engagement, but also the opportunity to make a stipend. Because if you participate in one of these two high impact practices, you can make up to $3,500 of a stipend, as well as getting some course credit. Our research program was actually ranked top three in the nation for our uh, in top three in the nation. Our students are looking at all sorts of topics like how mushrooms can help kill pesticides in food or how dissecting fish brains for an entire summer can evaluate how human brains recover after some sort of injury. What's unique about our research is that over 200 of our students have actually been fully funded for the research program and just one summer alone. That means they got to live on campus for free, they got housing pay, paid for, meal plans paid for, and over then 50% of our students are then being published, which I think is so significant. You're a 20 year old undergraduate student and your work is being read in some sort of scientific journal around the world. 92% of our students are taking part in an internship research or study away experience. Just a really cool program that Furman has to see what the world has to offer. You can study away for an entire semester. You can do an internship research, or among our more popular ones, a language immersion. So that's living with a host family, immersing yourself into the culture, learning the language if it's something other than English and really just becoming someone that is a part of that place. However, Furman allows our students to study away in the month of May or June for about three to three and a half weeks. We call it a May X June X term. And what is unique about all of these experiences is that they are 100% faculty led. So even though you might be going to Italy or Spain or France, an unfamiliar place studying, even an unfamiliar topic, it's always gonna be a familiar firm and play, uh, face leading you throughout these places. For the semester long a study away programs, it's always included in tuition. So it's never more to go to Italy or Spain or France than it would be just to stay right on Furman's campus. And then our fourth pillar, a part of the Furman Advantage, are our different outward facing institutes, which are really connecting our students to the outside world. We have, for example, the Shy Sustainability Center, which is really helping our students understand the importance of keeping our campus eco green friendly. Right next to that Furman Lake that I mentioned on our campus, we have eco cottages. So for any students that want to dedicate their whole lifestyle into a sustainable living, they will live in these cottages, they will compost their food, recycle, take, uh, take shorter showers, they'll hang up their clothes instead of putting them in the drying machine. Just again, different initiatives are part of keeping our campus eco-green friendly and connecting them to that outside world. And this eco cottages are just one of the many different housing options that we have on campus because Furman is 100% residential. So that means that you live on campus for all four years making it easy to really engage with your classmates and your peers because you now are a two minute walk away from them instead of a 15 to 20 minute car ride, uh, car ride downtown. You're typically gonna transition from dorm style living and then into apartment style living for those last two years and dorm style living for those first two years. And you'll get to hill, uh, hear from Hill later why that is so special and also what it's looking like inside each of those dorms and apartment style living. Even though we are a small liberal arts institution in the South, Furman is a division one school, so lots of school sphere on our campus where students are able to experience different high impact games, 
Before football games, we will crowd on the Furman Mall, which is this long lawn of grass. Uh, all the sorority and fraternity tents will set up, as well as some of our student organizations. So students will be able to get free food, free raffles. I think our biggest and most popular sport is probably basketball. And that is the one that you have to show up 45 minutes beforehand to grab a seat in the student section, but we have volleyball, soccer, even a club rugby team. So lots of opportunities for students to play at that D1 level or just support their friends who are playing at that level. And if you are not a big sports person, do not worry. Furman has over 165 clubs and organizations on campus. Our Heller Service Corps is our volunteer-based service. Student government associations, anime clubs, acapella clubs. Apparently there was a Harry Potter Quidditch club a few years before I was a student there. So there's a lot to offer. And if there's not a club, it's easy to start one as well. <coughs> Diving into our last two slides, just looking into logistics of how to get to Furman. I'm starting with our different deadlines, which you can see on the right side. Our first is early decision one, which is binding. So that is for anyone that is 100% sure that Furman is that place for them. It is a commitment, which means that if you are admitted, you're automatically enrolled for that next class. So typically for a student that really knows that Furman is that place for them. If you're someone that really loves Furman, but you wanna keep your options open, we also offer early action and you're still finding out pretty early in that spring semester. Our next is early decision two, which is exactly like early decision one in terms of that binding agreement. It's just a little later in the year, given any seniors that might need a little more time to decide if Furman is 100% that place for them, a little more time to decide that for themselves. And lastly, we have regular decision, which is our last um, option for our students. I will say all four of these deadlines are the same in terms of scholarship opportunities and applications applications admitted, we always just say choose the one that's going to fit best with your senior year schedule and your family situation. On the left side, things that we are looking at as an admission staff, if you will decide to apply to Furman either through the Common App or the Coalition App, our two main platforms, we're mainly going to be evaluating your high school transcript. And within that, we will be looking at your curriculum rigor. So that's just how you challenge yourself in high school. Were you taking APs, IBs, honors courses? We're never comparing what you're taking to what someone at another school is taking. And we're always looking at that within the own context of your school. We also will be looking at your GPA of your five core classes. So think English, social sciences, sciences, foreign languages, and math. So unfortunately, if you were Killing it in a PE class, we won't look at that, but any sort of APs you're taking will obviously be calculated into that. And then lastly, that last required material is your school report. For optional materials of your application, I always encourage students to submit letters of recommendation because we will read through each of those, but two to three is perfectly fine. It can come from a coach, a mentor, a teacher. Again, just anyone that's gonna give us a little more insight into who you are. You can submit your ACT or SAT scores and we will super score those scores. However, Furman is and has been test optional for about the last eight years. So if you're a student that feels like that one test score is not representative of everything else you've accomplished in your high school career, a good amount of our students, especially due to COVID this year, have already applied test optional. And then lastly, your resume, if you want to show us any special skills you have, maybe you're proficient in Microsoft Word or worked in a frozen yogurt shop, we would love to read more about you. And then lastly, coming to our last slide, the investment that it takes to come to Furman. I understand that it's a huge investment to come to Furman, but I always tell students that they're gonna be gaining just as big an investment after the end of their four years. Also things that you usually pay out of pocket for on the day-to-day -day basis. So housing, meal plans, laundry, a gym, a shuttle to the airport or downtown, that's all gonna be included in tuition. So you never really see students paying more than that. 92% of our student population is not paying that full tuition number, and that's because of our different merit-based scholarships that we offer and need-based aid. There is not a separate application for merit-based scholarships, so as soon as you apply, you are automatically considered, starting with our bell tower, which ranges between $5,000 to $25,000. Then our Towns and Hollingsville scholarships are both for $35,000, but our Towns is for our out-of-state students, and our Hollingsworth is for our South Carolina residents. And then we have our James B. Duke, which is our full tuition scholarship. We do have special scholarships for any athletes, musicians, or students interested in our ROTC Army Branch program or our special talent-based scholarships. And then of course, need-based aid for any families qualifying. We have our FAFSA, which is our government-based and based aid, and our CSS profile, which is our own institutional-based aid. So that's kind of our last slide and last piece of information about Berman. I know I threw a lot of information out to those who are watching this video, but again, I will leave my information um, in the chat feature as well as sending it to your counselor so you can reach out to me. Um, but with that, we'll get started with the Q&A with Hill so you can learn a little more about what the student experience looks like. Um, so Hill, if you wanna just start off with what has been your favorite academic experience so far at Berman. So 
And that's been an internship research. If that's just been a favorite class that you've had. Um, I know you're a junior, so you've had a lot at this point. So what's been your favorite academic experience? Yeah, so I would say um, my favorite academic experience that I've had uh, is actually just a class I've taken. Um, I will say that uh, I was supposed to study for a month. I was supposed to study World War I um, in uh, England and then throughout France this past May, but um, unfortunately that was postponed and then um, this coming semester, I was supposed to be studying abroad in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, so had a lot of really cool things planned that hopefully I get to do at some point. Um, but since those plans haven't really come to fruition yet, I took a really interesting class. Um, and that was a general education requirement that uh, Furman requires, uh, which is called a writing and research intensive course. Um, and uh, these are pretty difficult with a lot of writing and a lot of research. But uh, the topics are actually usually, um, you know, not like a very normal topic. Mine was called history of the America of the uh, history of the frontier in the American West, um, and it was about how uh, the United States moved westward. But it was also kind of um, about like Western movies and stuff, like John Wayne movies and things like that, um, and uh, kind of seeing what was portrayed accurately. Um, and all these popular West, Western films um, and what wasn't, what actually happened. Um, so that's that's my favorite course I've taken so far. Um, and I'm really hoping to get to um, actually participate in those uh, study away opportunities that I mentioned earlier. Definitely. And they can so easy to get to classes too, just because, you know, students are two minutes away or even in some of our uh, further apartment buildings, only about 10 minutes away from classes walking distance. So can you explain a little more about residential life and what that is like? So just diving into details of what each dorm room is looking like and then into those apartment style and then that random room and assignment process that we'll have for freshman year. Yeah, so um, a lot of people coming into Furman are a little nervous because it's a random roommate process. You don't get to uh, choose your roommate coming in, um, but it's really isn't. It really isn't um, bad. I've never heard of any uh, horror stories or anything. The way it works is uh, you'll fill out a pretty lengthy survey that Furman will send, and it'll be asking everything from whether you like to stay up late or if you'll be if you want to be hanging out with friends in the dorm room or if you're going to be studying in the dorm, um, all the way just to what kind of music you like and things like that, more uh, personable questions. And um, they're just trying to pair you with somebody who will be a compatible living roommate. Um, they're not necessarily trying to put you with your best friend, uh, mm -hmm. but they do a great job of putting you with somebody that you'll live well with. Um, and a lot of times, through that freshman year roommate, people do end up meeting some of their best friends that they have at Furman. Um, so those always um, end up pretty well. The way freshman dorms are set up um, is for an entire dorm building, um, it is co-ed, but it'll be separated by floor. So it might be like guys, girls, guys. Um, and there's communal style hall bathrooms. So you do share a bathroom with the rest of your hall. Um, the perk to that is you don't have to clean your own bathroom. The custodians who are awesome um, clean your bathroom for you. Uh, and then um, each hall has an RA and a FRAD. And a FRAD is a uh, freshman year advisor, essentially. Um, and they're kind of there to help you get acclimated with all the resources that are available to you, especially academically. So, um, or even at the beginning, helping you find your classes, whatever that may be. Um, they're there for anything like that. And along with the RA, they plan all kinds of hall events and stuff, um, especially at the beginning of the year so that you get to know the people that are living on your hall. Um, and that's awesome to help you make friends right off the bat if you come in not knowing anybody. Um, another cool thing about the freshman housing is, so they're all located in what we call South Housing and it's about five dorms that are kind of located around a courtyard. And right next to one of those dorms is the soccer stadium. So if you are on the third floor of that building, you kind of have like a box seat to the soccer games looking out your door. Um, so we would go watch soccer games from friend storms up there and stuff. But um, they're all right next to camp, right next to the academic part of campus. You can, in certain spots, get up at 825 and still make it to your 830 in plenty of time, um, which is <laughs> dangerous, but, but convenient. And then the next year as a sophomore, 
Um, the majority of sophomores live in lakeside housing. Um, and this is another uh, dorm style, but it's suite style instead of uh, hall. So you'll have a roommate um, and then you will share a bathroom with uh, two other suite mates. And you do get to choose your roommate and your suite mate this year. So by the time you've um, kind of made your friends and everything, you do get to live with them, which is nice. Um, and if you choose to participate in Greek life, uh, Furman's Greek housing happens in Lakeside. You live on the same hall as your fraternity or sorority pledge class, um, which is really cool. And a lot of the halls have kind of porches at the end that overlook the lake, um, the Furman Lake, which uh, Lakeside housing is located right next to. So um, that's cool as well. And uh, this entire building, you can get anywhere um, in it from the indoors without having to go outside. So when it's cold and you're trying to get to another hall to see your friends or something, um, that's nice. And it's really close to all the academic buildings as well. And then lastly is North Village. By the time you're a junior um, or a senior, you uh, live in more of an apartment style. Um, these are uh, four bedroom apartments. Everybody has their own bedroom um, with a kitchen and kind of a living area um, and then two bathrooms. So you share a bathroom with one other person. Uh, and these are really nice. They're kind of located on more of an edge of campus. Um, mm -hmm. Still, as uh, Joel mentioned earlier, only like a 10 minute walk to classes. So it's not far, but you um, do kind of feel like you're living a little more imp independently. Um, you have your own kitchen so you can cook for yourself if you'd like. Um, all of those kinds of things. And all the apartment buildings are still right next to each other. So you're still uh, located really closely to all the people that are your age on campus. Um, and in North Village, there's also basketball courts, volleyball courts, uh, grills outside, um, all kinds of things for people to use. Um, so a lot, of, um, a lot of freshmen and sophomores really look forward to uh, going to North Village. Um, and then also, I guess I should probably mention as well, there are eco cabins, um, which are located on the lake. Um, and these you have to apply to get into these, um, this housing, uh, but they're part of our sustainability center. Um, and if you are accepted, you kind of take a pledge to live sustainably, take shorter showers using colder water, uh, conserving water, things like that. Um, but you live in a really cool spot right on the lake, a great um, sunset view. Um, and it's more of a house than an apartment. So you live with uh, four or five other people in those houses, which is really cool too. But there's a lot of housing uh, options on campus and um, living on campus all four years really adds to the sense of community at Furman because everybody um, is on campus. It's easier to be involved because you're closer to, you know, wherever your meetings will be, you're close to your classes and everything. So um, the four-year residential option, uh, it's great. Yeah. And I think you know, some of my favorite traditions took place in the residential hall. So what has been one of your favorite Furman traditions? Maybe that's something you've already had to experience um, as a junior, or maybe something that you're even looking forward to in your senior year. So what's been your favorite Furman tradition? Yeah, so my, it's, it's hard to pick just one, but my favorite is definitely homecoming. Um, homecoming is awesome. They have uh, kind of what Furman students call the seven years of friendship because everybody's so involved on campus and everything. You'll be a freshman and you'll be in organizations with seniors that you become friends with. And then by the time you're a senior, um, you'll be making friends with freshmen and the same organizations that you meet around campus and stuff. So it's kind of a seven year span of people you make friends with at Furman. Um, so homecoming, everybody comes back um for homecoming weekend and there's a lot of cool festivities um and all the student organizations set up tents and make floats and it's kind of like a three-day tailgate for the football game on saturday which is a whole lot of fun um and getting to see people coming back to campus and just kind of everybody being outside on um the Furman mall um is awesome and then uh another cool tradition um that i'm looking forward to that uh, i would say is pretty unique to Furman. um is that uh, on your last day of classes as, as a senior, a lot of the students go to classes in their bathing suits and stuff, and then they go swimming in the fountains outside the library um, afterwards that afternoon. And the Student Activities Board uh, sets up a lot of floats and kayaks and things like that. Um, and while it's only the seniors that get to swim in the fountains and everything, everybody kind of goes out there and hangs out to celebrate the end of the year. So that's a cool one I'm looking forward to as well. No, the LDOC is definitely my favorite one. I think I skipped class that entire day and just had a day out on the fountains. And then we talked a little bit about classes and professors, but what do you like to do for Fun Hill in your free time? So if that is on Furman's campus, 
or in downtown Greenville, where are you and other students doing for fun? Um, so some of my favorite things to do on campus um, revolve around sporting events. Uh, so as Joe mentioned earlier, the basketball games are probably the biggest deal for him because our basketball team um, is really good or, and has been in the last few years. So students get really excited about those games. Um, and those are a lot of fun. A lot of time, the student section, you know, you'll get there and there aren't any seats left. So you'll have to find seats somewhere else and stuff. Um, there are a lot of people that go to those games. Football games are my favorite. Um, as I mentioned with homecoming, uh, it's on a little bit of a larger scale for homecoming, but every home football game, all the student organizations uh, from Greek organizations, to the student activities board, everybody uh, goes out there and sets up tents uh, and, you know, they'll grill food, do whatever uh, before the football games. So that's a, a really fun social experience in my opinion. But then um, even the soccer games, baseball games, uh, the club rugby team is one of the best rugby teams in the country. Um, so their games are surprisingly fun. I had never been to a rugby game before Furman. Mm -hmm. Um, but the sports attending sporting events at Furman are a lot of fun. Um, the physical activity center also, there are, there's a basketball court. I like to play basketball a lot. Um, so my friends and I will go there, but you can also, uh, rent bikes and, uh, things like that from the physical activity center and go on the swamp rabbit trail, which is a trail that goes from a nearby town traveler's rest, um, all the way down to Greenville. Um, so students will, bike, run, walk. Um, there's kind of restaurants along there on certain parts and stuff that students will go to. So that's, that's a cool um, activity as well. Uh, there's a ton of great restaurants in Greenville. Um, so that's always a fun thing on a weekend or if you have time on a weekday or something and you're trying to eat out um, any type of food you could think of, they've got it and they've got great restaurants that have it. Um, and then one of my favorite things about Furman is how it's uh, located super close to the mountains. So if you like to hike or fly fish or camp or anything like that, um, all things I enjoy, uh, you can get to the mountains in like 20 minutes, um, depending on where you're trying to go. So uh, Greenville's located in a really cool spot. It's very centrally located between big cities and the coast isn't far, but the mountains are uh, nearby. And I think that's a really cool aspect of Furman. Thanks Joe, for sharing and for being here. If you just want to offer one piece of advice, maybe a sentence or two, because it looks like we have one minute left for any students watching um, for the college search process. Yeah, so I would just say don't sweat it too much. Um, take it seriously, but uh, have faith that you'll end up uh, kind of where you're supposed to be or where the best option um, is for you. Because I would say in the vast majority of situations, um, it works out for the best wherever you end up for college. And a lot of people, uh, you know, think they may want to go someplace, but then once they get to a school that may not have been their top choice, they realize it was the best place for them anyway. So uh, take it seriously on your applications and everything, but don't sweat the outcome too, too much. Awesome. Thanks, Phil. And thank you, April and Shannon, for organizing everything for us and having us here today. I put my email as well as our firm and virtual webpage with all of our virtual links in the chat. So for any students that watch this and are interested, feel free to forward this to them. And I am excited to work with them for this fall or next fall. Thank you all so Thank much. You. This was extremely informative. Hill, I have to say that was the best student interview I've ever seen. And we've done a lot of these. So thank you so much for your time. I mean, it's who's better to hear it from than somebody that's going through it. So we really appreciate that. So thank you so much, Jillian. Yeah, I love that. Great. that was great. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. And we love obviously having students so they can see that too. So thank you both so much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Have, Have a, a great day. day. Bye. You too. Bye.